welcome to Bourbon Bites Whiskey Reviews with a Gaming Twist. I'm Clifton, and I'm so excited that you are joining me for another Thursday night live stream. I've been looking forward to this one for quite a while, ever since I got these samples. I know some of you guys have been too. Um, tonight's going to be a Scotch stream, so I know a lot of you guys have been kind of experimenting over the past year or so. Last time I had these guys on, I was actually very, very new to Scotch, um, and I was not worthy. But I think, you know, you guys have trained me well. I'm very, I'm a lot more experienced with it now. Um, and I'm so, so excited to dive into these in just one bit. I um, want to give a couple shout outs to everyone here in the chat. I see Emily Chambers here <laughs> referencing a joke I made over in Perry's, um, this is my bourbon podcast stream earlier, <laughs> expansion pack scotch. So we said scotch is just the expansion pack for bourbon. I, I'm not necessarily, it's probably the other way around, honestly. Scotch was probably first, but um, <laughs> in the context of this channel, yes, I like that. <laughs> Zover's here in the chat as well as Brandon. Um, I also see Eric. Eric, I don't think I've recognized your name. You know, I could I could be wrong, but welcome. Glad to have you here. Uh, Sugar Kitty, good to see you. Meow to you, my friend. Um, Whiskey Mountains, Adriana, how are you doing? Uh, so glad to have you all on board for this one. And then Nick Proman, of course, shortly after Adriana, as always. <laughs> and Steven, good to see you, Steven. Um, so yeah, like I said, tonight's going to be really, really special. Um, and I'm not going to ke help keep our guests waiting any longer. Please welcome back to the show, Amber Aristi from uh, the Glendronic. Hi, how are you? Good. How are you? So thank you so much for coming back on. <laughs> you didn't completely, yeah, you didn't, after the last stream, you weren't like, okay, this guy doesn't know anything. <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, scotch is always a journey. No matter where you're starting, it's always part of the journey. And you're already drinking whiskey, so you're ahead of the game in that. Very true. And we're going to be doing some really, really special ones tonight. I'm so, so excited to get into these. Um, so like I said, last year, actually about this time last year, um, I, had, I had had Amber on for the first time. And um, I had very little experience with Highland Scotches. I think I, I had like a couple of Dean's Dins, but, and I had just bought my very first Glendronic that day. <laughs> so, so I think I've come a long way since then. Um, I also, I was rewatching our stream that we did last year, um, earlier today. And I realized you were actually the one that suggested I try a bunch of different dessert wines on their own and do a lineup side by side. I've done two of those streams ever since then. So thank you for that suggestion. Has been incredibly helpful, especially in my Scotch journey. Um, yeah. that was, that's so fun. I think Eileen, I, I love the dessert, like quartz, um, but I also love a good, um, PX sherry. So that's what mm -hmm. I learned that I like, I like the sweeter ones. Um, but I was really intrigued. I wasn't, I think I was caught off guard by Oloroso. I wasn't expecting it to be what it was, um, but I really appreciated it. And, um, it really gave me a better appreciation for, you know, the cast that they use, um, that especially the, the Glendronic. So... Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's, I love that you said that because I actually had an experience just the other night. We did um, a Ben Riek cask bottling tasting with um, Ben Riek being our other brand um, mm -hmm. in the Brown Foreman household. And we ended up tasting the dessert wines after after the scotch. And it, it's just such a cool experience. So I'm really glad that you went on that, um, went out and tasted some. And P you're right, PX is, it's like the king of the dessert wines. <laughs> it's amazing. You can't go wrong with it. Yeah, so that was that was so much fun, and um, I also remember last time you you were talking about you were a bit of a gamer. Actually, today you you said you you had a delay because you were playing some Elden Ring. So I was gonna say, what have you been playing lately? Yeah, um, Elden Ring badly, uh, mm -hmm. which I guess is like the theme of Elden Ring. I was gonna say I didn't even buy that game because I know I would be absolutely awful. I have actually a few viewers that are really big into that game, so I I just know it's not my game that I'm gonna be good at. <laughs> oh man, I I am convinced that absolutely zero people are good at that game but <laughs> the story is intriguing and honestly like once i figured out the hud i was like okay i think i can maybe figure this out but then i got killed by a crab for like this <laughs> time and i was i don't i don't know what i'm doing anymore hey, it's not it's not, you took, at least you took a took a risk with that i didn't um <laughs> what i've been playing lately i i'm i'm a member of uh i don't know if you like humble humble choice like humble bundle um they do a subscription that i've been subscribed to probably like two years but their game this month that was featured was uh, Destroy All Humans, which was a game that I used to have on PlayStation 2. You're like an alien, and like your goal is just to destroy everything. It's 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 like a throwback to my childhood because I really loved that game. This is, of course, a remastered version of it, mm -hmm. um, but it's so much fun. And uh, yeah, I have been just enjoying just messing around on that game lately. <laughs> oh, I love that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look into that because that sounds like a great just like take a break game too. Yeah, it's very irreverent. Like the voice acting is, is hilarious. It's definitely adult. Like it, it looks like a kid game, but it's definitely a lot of adult humor. Um, yeah. it's, it's a lot of fun. 
Uh, so yeah, that's what I've been playing. Actually, I was going to tie that to the, the podcast I'm releasing tomorrow. Um, for those of you listening that um, listen to the podcast, I'm reviewing Ardbeg Fur Mutation, which is a very on theme alien um, one. Amber, have you heard much about that one? Um, yeah, but I haven't had the pleasure of tasting it yet. So that's been it's, on the list. It's so odd. It's it's so earthy and interesting. And, and it's weird that the peat takes it on the back burner. I was not expecting that with an art bag. Uh, it's, oh, so it's yeah. really interesting. So those of you in the chat, make sure you listen to tomorrow's podcast episode. It was a really, really fun one. But tonight we are not doing peated scotch, thankfully. <laughs> I kind of blew my palate with that one earlier this week. Um, but I'm, I'm very, very excited to get into these. So um, I know you, you, of course, you gave us the rundown last time, but can you just tell us a little bit about just a quick little thing about the brand, you know, if people are new to the Glendronic? Yeah, absolutely. So Glendronic is a Scotch distillery that is located sort of East Highland. So if, for those that are familiar with the regions of Scotland, of course, there are five regions of Scotland, but on the main body um, of Scotland, there is the lowlands, of course, and the highlands. And then in the middle um, of the highlands, there's a little subset called Speyside, which has a higher density of Scotch distilleries than the rest of Scotland combined. So it's a really densely populated Scotchy region. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of really brilliant juice coming out of there. But there is a little sliver of the highlands that are kind of off on that right shoulder, on that east shoulder, um, going out towards Aberdeen. And that area is mm -hmm. called East um, East Highland. And that's where we're located. So we're kind of in the rolling hills of Highlands. It's very green. There are um, distilleries surrounded by bramble bushes and berries and um, all these just lovely, beautiful <laughs> things that really mm -hmm. showcase our whiskey when you actually drink it. So um, Glendronic actually opened in 1826. It was opened by, well, we got our license in 1826. Um, no one's saying exactly when we started distilling, but our license is 1826. <laughs> gotcha. So um, we're very, very remote. James Allardyce kind of plopped down in this valley and said, I make scotch here now. Um, and so he was one of the first to really utilize really heavy sherried uh, barrels and put it on those whiskeys to make them really robust and broad and kind of created a category of scotch whiskey that has just exploded over the last 200 years. But what's mm -hmm. interesting about the Glendronic is we were one of the first second distillery ever to get a legal license. And we've been making our whiskey exactly the same way since 1826. So um, when we say that we know what we're doing with Sherry, we really, really mean it. Um, mm -hmm. So it's kind of a really cool journey to take, especially with these barrels, because you really are drinking the history of Scotland when you're when you're drinking Glendronic. That's yeah, that's incredible, especially with these releases. Um, all the info for, at, for the ones we're trying tonight will be in the description below. If y'all are curious, there's the tasting notes from the distillery there, as well as you know the ABV bottles produced and the price on these. So if y'all are curious during the stream, definitely check the description. Um, I did see a super chat come in from our friend Adriana at Whiskey Mountains. She says, cheers, probably in and out tonight celebrating my new niece. Cheer cheers to Amelia Rodriguez. Congratulations. That's so awesome. That's Born just fantastic. three hours ago. Wow. Congratulations, uh, uh, Aunt Adriana. <laughs> very, very cool. That's awesome. And thank you so much for the super chat. That, that means a lot. I see a lot of people popping into the chat now. Whiskey Food Dude says, cheers to a great stream. Cheers, everyone. Cheers to you. Donnie is here after celebrating uh, his wife, Diana's birthday. So happy birthday again, Diana. Um, I appreciate y'all coming in and checking out the stream. Peter, I see you there too. Um, yeah, lots of really cool people here. So let's get, let's get into these. So we chatted a little bit before about, you know, cause these are all different cask types. So it's kind of hard to be like, you know, which ones, which ones first. So we decided to actually go up in order of um, just age. Um, so we're starting with the 1994. Um, this is cask. 5080. Um, and if anyone's watching the replay, I will put um, the chapter markers in the description um, so you can skip around and find whichever one is available to you. Um, so, so Amber, tell us a little bit about this one. Yeah. So this one is um, uh, 27 years old. So distilled in 1994. We, when we talk about a single cask, which all of the whiskeys that we're tasting tonight are single casks. So that means that every bit of the juice that you are drinking tonight came from one barrel. Generally speaking, when we're talking about even single malt or bourbon or whatever the case may be, that whiskey is blended. It's almost always blended unless it says single cask on it. So this is exactly what we're drinking tonight. So this one in particular came from an Oloroso barrel. So 
big sherry barrel. This type of sherry, generally speaking, and we talked a little bit about this, mm -hmm. um, is that it can be a little alarming for some folks because when we think dessert wine, we think big sugars and broad right. fruit notes and, um, you know, kind of a sticky, cakey sweetness. Mm -hmm. um, but with Oloroso, it's kind of equal and opposite to that. So it tends to be <laughs> drier. <laughs> yeah. I think I just, I just, just thought that all of it was going to be super sweet. Mm -hmm. So I was, I, I was like, what, what's wrong? And I was like, okay. And I, as I tried to, I actually went back to it after that stream. I was like, okay. So now that I expect this, I appreciate it a bit more, but man, that caught me off guard. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. And I, I don't blame you for that at all. And um, it, almost, it almost has a, like an oxidized quality mm -hmm. to it as well. Yep. So it has that kind of funky nutty thing going on, which mm -hmm. for some, myself included, it's like exactly what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. I love it on whiskey because it almost makes it this decadent dark chocolate sort of situation. So mm -hmm. when we put our nose in this, Actually, I haven't, I haven't poured my, you know, I'm going to go ahead and pour them all just so they're, they can open up a bit. Oh, that's um, a good idea. I'm going to open all these up too. Yeah. Um, so when we put our nose in it, we're really going to be kind of looking for some of those sort of darker notes, maybe a little bit drier on the drier scale. Sometimes when you age whiskey for a long time, no matter what the barrel, you're going to get a lot of those kind of barrel notes out of it regardless. And this one... Oh, it's just lovely. Um, Peter White says, I still have a heel left of the Glendronic 1994, um, but bottled in 2014, Oloroso. Oh, very nice. Seems like a great night to, to finish that bottle off. Uh, definitely, Peter. <laughs> yeah, join us. Any, anyone, um, everyone in the chat, let us know what you guys are drinking. It doesn't have to be Glendronic, but it is. But if it is, you know what? Let us know. We'd love to know which, which expression you are you are having so <laughs> and then perry from this my bourbon podcast says is it bourbon bites and a button down looking good hey i gotta dress up for fancy whiskey guys <laughs> also i just got home from work so <laughs> there's that too <laughs> um but welcome perry and y'all make make sure to check out perry's replay of his live stream earlier tonight all right i'm ready to nose this one excellent yeah so i'm getting a little bit of citrus on this so it's a more like a um, orange kind of like a mm less lemon more of that kind of softer orange peel yeah it's definitely fruity and like it, it's sweet it's like a honey kind of sweetness i think as well oh absolutely and like underneath kind of the sweeter notes i do get some of that that walnut but i think that mm -hmm. oak and that age is giving it kind of a sweeter aspect as well and I had forgotten how nutty Oloroso or, or expresses itself. Um, that was, I, I definitely was, like I said, I was caught off guard by it, but you're right. It's super nutty. And now that I, I remembered that, definitely pick up that, that nuttiness on the nose. Oh yeah. Wow. And just a little bit of like, almost like dark chocolate tannin. Mm -hmm. And it, it gets a little um, like, like dark fruit, like maybe like fig or like plum or something like that as well. Oh, I like figs. Yeah. Mm, I'm going to taste this. All right. Mm. Wow. You know, the thing about this is that I'm always like, this is my favorite, but I'm going to say that <laughs> one too. Well, you mentioned, so this is your first time trying these, which is really exciting. Yeah. I've, um, I wanted to like kind of have my reaction saved up for y'all. So. Oh yeah. No, I appreciate it. I, I, I cheated a little. I, I tried them a little bit yesterday just to, cause I knew this was like a really important stream that I wanted to do my best on. So I took a little bit of tasting notes here um, and that's kind of what I was kind of drawing from, but yeah, I didn't pick up on the nuttiness yesterday, but now that we mentioned that, like, absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. nutty. That's it's still fruit forward. I think it's like, I, I still get like plum or like those darker fruits, um, but very desserty. Is that, is that yeah. kind of like what you're getting on it? Oh, absolutely. And it has like a really lovely viscosity as well. That's kind of like sitting in my mouth and kind of hanging out. I'm going to go back because that was my first sip of whiskey for the day. So I think I need it. To... Oh yeah. No, I got to say it's yeah. very viscous. It's very thick and it's definitely like, yeah, dessert. It's like actually like a dessert wine in itself because of how, how rich and thick it is. Mm. That's really nice. That's a great way to start off. I think. <laughs> Just a little touch of spice. Mm-hmm. That's really lovely. And like some kind of like a really dark, deep berry. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's just so lovely. I wish y'all were tasting this with us. It's, it's really nice. Yeah. I wish I, I wish I had something to share with y'all, but I appreciate y'all yeah. tuning in and, and drinking with us, whether, whatever you're drinking on, just enjoy, enjoy whatever glass you have. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And what's really cool about these is that each um, region of the United States got a different barrel. Mm -hmm. So um, like, we were saying earlier, you know, we'll put up um, 
the yeah. exactly those cash like right that. Here. so this first one that we're tasting is actually not available to either me and georgia <laughs> yeah <laughs> or you in la so um but for those of you that are in the middle states there please please go out and, and check it out you know you might be able to find a bottle of this in those states already because they should have all shipped out to you yeah, my, I'm from South Carolina, so I might have to send my mom out hunting. Not that I trust that she'll get the right thing. I'm, by the way, hi, mom. I know she's going to watch the replay, so, so no offense. But but yeah, that's very cool. I know we have a few people from all over. So if y'all see y'all stay at any point, just give a shout. Say you're from there. Love to hear where you guys are from. Yeah, absolutely. And what's also cool about this is all of these barrels were very specifically chosen by our master blender, Rachel Berry. Who and I know I probably talked about her last time, but she really is one of my greatest whiskey heroes. She has an immense history in the whiskey industry and has just the perfect, perfect palate. So when she went into our warehouse to choose each of these barrels, she's very specifically looking for different traits for each of these regions. So these mm -hmm. are definitely very special. So I noticed that it says for cask type of this one, it's a punch in. And I remember last time you mentioned, is that like a, is it a taller barrel? It's it's definitely, because I'm looking at the, the output of this one. I mean, there's, there's a lot about 667 bottles of this. Yeah, they're fat. They are yeah. big fat <laughs> barrels. And of course, because we're talking about it, I'm not going to remember exactly the number of liters. Five, mm -hmm. 500 milliliters, something around there. Um, they're big, big boys. Um, mm -hmm. And usually well, well, well used. So a lot of times in Spain, they will use those barrels until they're dead. Mm -hmm. um, basically what that means is they dump the sherry and bottle it and ship it out and then just put more sherry directly into that barrel until that barrel is no longer giving any of its inner soul back into the liquid inside. Right. So they can be really, really old, like when they were actually um, coopered, cooper, I guess. Exactly. Yep. So... Basically, what Rachel does is when she goes out and chooses her barrels, she's looking specifically for certain qualities in the barrel that are going to suit our whiskeys best. Um, so they're not just any old barrel that Spain didn't want anymore. We right. work with a particular bodega. She goes out, she chooses her barrels, and she buys the sherry. So all of our barrels come to us dripping wet. So there's still sherry in those barrels when we put our whiskey in. So it's oh, you can tell with this, too. There's a lot of that impact on the on the whiskey itself. Absolutely. Very yeah. vibrant barrels. Steven says he's having the uh, Glendronic 18. Uh, nice. You know what? I I have not, I need to, I need to see that one out. Cause I know I, I, I tried port cause I know I was seeking out port before our last stream, just the standard release. Um, I didn't get a bottle of it, but I did try it at a friend's house and I really enjoyed it. Again, port is one of my favorite oh, dessert wines. So like I had to try that one, but um, oh, really? very cool. I have not had the 18 Steven, but you'll have to let us know how that is. Yeah. The 18 is also hundred percent Olorosa barrel. Oh, really? Nice. So, yeah. So it's one of the few that we do outside of these cask releases that sees no PX. Mm -hmm. So it's um, it has that kind of super dark chocolate decadent thing going. And I actually do pair it when I'm drinking it with some of my more bitter like Peruvian 76 to 80 percent chocolates. And mm. oh, it's just lovely. It's lovely. That sounds that sounds amazing. A um, uh, question from Brandon. He says, "Are there any um, duty free bottles available?" I'll be traveling internationally soon. Yeah, do you guys have any um, releases that are duty free exclusives or? Um, I you know what? That's such a great question. I am not entirely sure if we have Glendronic duty free specifically. Okay. Um, I will find out and I will make sure that we get that answer to you. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. And if, if you find out later and you just, just, just let me know and I'll leave a comment down below. Um, if y'all are watching the replay, um, if we have an answer, it'll be in the comments down below. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I know that we do have some Ben Riecks out right now that are, that are duty free and those are going to be dessert wine finished or aged. And yeah, so there's oh, definitely nice. some cool stuff from Brown Foreman out there. Um, Donnie dropping the info. He says it's about 80, 84 us gallons. Um, Thank you. <laughs> of course, they have the power of Google, right? They're not. A <laughs> and the sugar kitty says, um, punchins are squatter, but fatter than a butt. Fatter than a butt. I like, I don't know if that was intentional, but I like that. <laughs> um, very, man, that's, I got to save some of my glass because that's, I got to come back to that and see kind of, not that necessarily compare them, but I, I like to see, you know, which ones I grab, I would gravitate towards. Sure. Absolutely. So let's right. move on to the 1992 cask. This is 6052. Mm -hmm. um do you have the bottles perchance you know i don't have the bottles okay. i was, I I was have... just gonna say like we could show it but yeah so <laughs> i the thumbnail look everyone look at the thumbnail if you're curious to see what the bottles look like i have them uh there yeah and i do have other releases aside 
I do have other releases that you're going to be looking for something that looks a little bit like this, just different years. Gotcha. Is it similar color? Is it still the green or is it? Um, um this year I want to say that it's red, but don't quote me on that one. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to put you on the spot, but okay, cool. Yeah. So you, yeah, their, their bottles are very, they all look similar. Like if you don't see it in the box, you'll definitely reckon it's very recognizable as a brand. Absolutely. Yep. For so sure. Let, so tell us a little about this one. So this one is, like I said, cask 6052. Yes. So this is our 28 year old and this is aged in Pedro Jimenez punch-ins. Mm -hmm. So again, now we know that's 318 liters <laughs> and they are, they are really wide barrels. Like when I say you could fit three humans into it, I'm not joking. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. This is, it's, I think it's a little, to me, it's a little less sweet, but it's still more like, it's still got that honey note that I was picking up on the other one. It definitely has a lot of, and almost like a stone fruit situation. Right. Yeah. And I, it, funny enough, I get like, a, this is older. It's a year older. I'm getting, I'm getting a lot more oak on this one. I think the oak is impacting this a good bit. Yeah. And I'm getting something creamy, like mm. custard. Yeah. Now that you say that, I'm thinking like, uh, <laughs> I'm thinking of those, um, I've mentioned this as a note a lot of times. Um, I don't know if you remember those like cream savers. They were like lifesavers, but they were like cream flavored. So they're like strawberry and there's like a peaches one. I, so it was like a I do remember those. So I, I do get that. You mentioned like, yeah, the darker fruits. I can totally picture this being like the strawberries and cream one. I do I get that creaminess for sure. Peach one too, didn't they? Yeah. Wait, the, which one? That peach one? Yep. Those are the two I remember. They may have had more, but I remember the strawberry and the peach. My my mom would always, <laughs> I remember as a kid, my mom would always have them in her purse when we went to church. And I was like, I got it. That, that was what brought me into church <laughs> to re eat the candy. Oh, that's hilarious. My mom also was totally addicted to lifesavers when I was a um, younger child. And whenever mm -hmm. I was like having a sweet craving, I would just like dig into her purse and pull it out. <laughs> oh, man. Miss those days. <laughs> <laughs> the good old days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, that's that's really it's it to me. It's a lot more on the nose. It's a lot more. I, I, I don't want to say delicate, but I, I gotta try it. So cheers. Mm. And I have to say, where the sweetness wasn't coming through on the nose, it's definitely coming through on the palate. Like that is vibrant. That is big. It has all of that candy on there. It's really really lovely. You do get a you still get a touch of that dark chocolate, but mostly it's like big bright fruits. Oh yeah, and I'm still I'm I'm lingering. I'm hung on that 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 honey note, but to me it's like a like a really thick like honey syrup almost. Like it's this is honestly I was saying how the mouthfeel was on the first one. This is even thicker. This is even more viscous, I think. And this like, I mean it's it's a little floral. Like I mean I think of like a, like a wildflower honey or even like, um, man even like a <laughs> I don't want to say a perfume. That's not very like <laughs> appetizing, but it's like it's really <laughs> delicate and and yeah wow. Yeah, it does have like the nose is so delicate, but. For me, I feel like the palate is really punching out there. Like it really wants to be heard. Like it's, sh it's mm -hmm. shouting at me a little bit, which I love. And it almost has like a grapiness to it that is, it can be typical of some dessert wines, mm -hmm. more often PX than Oloroso. Yeah, it's got a really so nice spice on the finish as well. Like this one I think has like a nice really kick right at the end that I really, really like. Mm -hmm. The front palette is so good. This is really Moorish. <laughs> I keep drinking this one. And for reference, y'all, this is 50.8%. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is a little bit lower than the first one I tasted. And I, I honestly would not never have been able to tell that. Honestly, I think it drinks just as, just as like, I think the spice is what's helping that. Um, mm -hmm. Which I mean, I'm, I'm, I do love higher proof. So seeing these are all above 50%, I mean, that's, that's always a good thing in my book. Man, that's really, really nice. It's very, like you said, very thick, viscous, creamy. Yeah. Wow. Still, Do you know what it's it still... reminds me of? Have you ever that? had poached pears with like caramelized sugar and then cream poured over the top? <sighs> Probably, but I, I honestly am not super familiar with that flavor profile. But um, I could I could see that there's definitely some pear in there. I had a um, I had a friend that I have a friend. She's wonderful and still an amazing cook. But this was early, early on when we were in our very early twenties. She was experimenting with like a poached pear dessert dish. Totally set the kitchen on fire. <laughs> alarms going off it was it was insane but i Been do there. remember <laughs> that that dish when she finally served the parts of it that weren't burnt was <laughs> extraordinary and i'm like it's that's like what's coming to mind every time i take a little sip of this so christine if you're watching this <laughs> this is your whiskey 
Uh, I need to I need to have some of Christine's cooking because this is delicious. <laughs> Mm. Mm. yeah that is that is just extraordinary whiskey right now the first one also extraordinary but mm. so far i'm i'm thinking this px is is the winner for me so far we're gonna have to see about the last one yeah we're gonna have to go back through. i like to go back th through them as well because it's always hard to judge the first one um till you try the other ones but they're they're oh, very absolutely. different i think that you can tell the base spirit's obviously still the same but the mm -hmm. the impact that those different wines are having on it really changes it like, in a very very surprising way yeah absolutely yeah and you know it's it's funny because i mean we've talked about how dry oloroso is but i don't know if i talked in reverse of how like really sweet px can be it, it really mm -hmm. does have this really densely very high residual sugar, um, tons of raisins and like cooked down berries and things like that. And they present really, really well in whiskey, which is why so many Scotch producers use them. Not only is it a little bit easier to get, uh, it was not so much anymore, but it was a little bit easier to get those barrels from Spain. Um, it just presents so well in whiskey and barley really, really takes on those kind of sweeter flavors. I think in it, it really well because it's such a dry grain that, right. you know, corn might overpower it or it might become too sickly sweet, you know, if you age it too long. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that already has that much sugar in the barrel. The barley kind of balances that. And so they play, they play really well together. Yeah, I actually, so when, speaking in terms of American whiskey, I really think rye whiskey handles um, the, these sweeter finishes way better. I love a port finished wine or <laughs> port finished rye. Um, and there's, there's quite a few brands that have done that. And I just think rye really highlights those different notes more so, like you said, than the corn, than the bourbon. Um, I recently did a, um, there's a new series from Barton, the Thomas S. Moore. They've released their second batch of those. Um, I did a stream very, very recently of the second batch. That one was Madeira. I think it was also, they did Port as well. They did Sherry. So that was really interesting. But the differences were very subtle between those. Mm -hmm. Whereas this, I mean, it's, it's a huge, huge difference. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Madeira, I think, might be one of my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, Madeira and Sauternes, I think, are probably my favorite barrels to put whiskey in they just present so incredibly well with barley but i think you're you're right rye i think because it's so spicy it like doesn't really need help i don't think i love rye um mm -hmm. i love that spicy grain but it definitely they definitely suit each other in a way that corn tends to to not as much um and i think i think it's the same kind of idea that kind of super dry grain with that super sweet dessert Match made in heaven. Works really well. Um, Brandon says, don't forget to smash that like button. Yes, if you guys are enjoying the stream so far, make sure to hit the thumbs up. It does really help the algorithm here on YouTube. And he also has a follow-up question. He said, um, so so he's not super familiar with the different differences. Um, could you explain a little bit about, you know, the difference between PX Sherry and Oloroso Sherry, I guess, flavor profile, as well as just like, you know, where they're from or anything like that? Right. Yeah. So generally speaking, when we're talking about Sherry, we're talking about her at Spain. Um, whether we're talking about PX or Oloroso. Um, but what's really important to know about the differences here is that Pedro Jimenez, which is PX, is like I was saying, very high residual sugar. So you're mm -hmm. going to get that kind of ruby fruit note along with that sugar, tons of raisin that cannot be overstated and not in quite the same oxidative way as with port and more of that kind of bright, more acidic sort of way. Um, so it definitely has a big, big presence with like cooked down berries and all of these really lovely sorts of things that you might think first when you're thinking about a dessert. Um, mm -hmm. Oloroso, on the other hand, is like I was saying, equal and opposite. So Oloroso is usually bone, bone dry. It has more of a creamy nature to it. So you might get more nuts, butter, at actual cream, like heavy whipping cream almost has a really soft palate that will kind of welcome you. And, um, and then it also has a little bit of a tannin to it as well. So it's just got a little bit of a different balance to it. So when in terms of whiskey, when we're mixing those two flavors together, you're getting a really interesting balance, which is what Glendronic does for most of our bottling. So if you were to venture out and look for a bottle, if you got the 12 year old, you would have PX and Oloroso together. If you were lucky enough to find the 15 year, same, 
PX and Olorosa together. And as I was saying, the uh, 18 year is 100% Olorosa. So that dark chocolate tannins, very mm-hmm. dry. And there's the port one as well. That's almost saying they were having the port wood earlier. Yes, the port wood, the port wood is real special. The port wood is uh, one of our releases that is aged for seven years and then put into a port barrel for an additional mm-hmm. three. So it's right around 10 years old and it has that really lovely, big, bright, pretty raisiny thing and it's it is gorgeous it really is it's a totally different beast altogether and very unusual for glenjonic uh so steven says is a slightly unrelated question he says um more inter- is it been how do you pronounce it ben Ray- ben Ray- ben Reik. ben Reik, okay mm-hmm. um he says is the tin original still the same maturation wise compared to the brown gold distillery logo so yes and no um that's a great great unrelated question uh <laughs> so the ben Reik- did go through a bit of a change when Rachel Berry took over. So the original 10 that you're seeing in that really lovely sort of soft blue um, 10, I probably have one somewhere around here, is it harkens back to the original label that was in that kind of tan. So that one was mostly bourbon barrel. The new one has bourbon, virgin, touch of sherry. So it does have a little bit of a different barrel makeup. But the whole idea was that Rachel, when she took over, she was tasting that original that we had and said, how can I make Billy Walker's dream bigger? So she took those flavor profiles, that super fresh barley, citrus zest, all of those really lovely things that that Ben Rieck is really known for and just dialed it up a little bit with um, just a touch of that sherry. So it's a little bit rounder, softer, a little bit bigger on the palate. And then also she added just a touch of peated whiskey. I think it's like less than 1% for the ton. And it's just changes the way that it presents entirely. It's like adding salt on the top of a cookie or, you know, just a little bit of a contrast to really brighten those fruit flavors and those floral aspects. So Yes and no. It um, When I tasted them next to each other and I knew what I was tasting, I could tell a difference. And then yeah. every time I've tasted them blind afterwards, I couldn't say which one was Billy's and which one was, was Rachel's. So, Very cool. Yeah. Thank you, Francis. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, these guys are a lot more <laughs> diverse in their uh, Scottish experiences than I am. Um, and then Brandon had just one follow-up question related to his uh, question earlier. He says, do they state on the bottles um, if, which which what they are matured in? Yes, absolutely. So the interesting thing, I see that you say finish there, and that is such a great term. That is because us bourbon, us bourbon drinkers, we say yeah. finish, but we, we mean, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. And there are Scotch producers that do finish, um, mm-hmm. but Glendronic and Benriek very specifically generally don't finish at all. So all of our whiskeys are fully matured in blank barrel. So mm-hmm. yes, if you were to go find the 12, 15, whichever it would say Pedro Jimenez Oloroso kind of top and bottom. I wish I had a bottle within reach so I could show you, but yeah, I, I, I if I would have thought I would have grabbed mine as well, but it's yeah, it, Brandon, it does say it on the bottle, but yes. good question. And yeah, I, I'm, I catch myself all the time saying finish and I, that's just me as a bourbon drinker because we're used to everything being virgin Oak and everything's mm-hmm. finished beyond there. So <laughs> totally get that. All right. Well, are we ready to move on to yeah. the final one of the night? Oh, wait, actually let me bring up where the, where the sec, where the, the past, which one are we drinking? Sorry. Hmm. 6052, where that's available. So, um, so this is the one that's actually available in California um, as well as, oh, God, I was going to start reading them out, but I'm like, I'm going to mess one up. Let me try it. Idaho, Indiana, Kentucky, Louisiana, New Mexico, North Carolina, North Dakota, Nebraska, Montana. Oh man, I'm so bad. <laughs> so, Ohio, Oklahoma, Oregon, Texas, Utah, Washington, and Wyoming. Wow, I did better than I thought I would. <laughs> It's great. Yeah. Not attempting that again. But so this um if you guys are in those states, let us know in the comments. We'd love to see where you guys are tuning in from. And I, I know quite a few of you are from Kentucky and Indiana here tonight. So um sound off where y'all are from in the chat. <laughs> There's Whiskey Mountain, she's in Utah. She's like, Woo, Utah. <laughs> I, love that. I actually was just in Utah. I uh dropped through Boise for the first time in my life and had a great time. I have not been to Utah, but I need to go out there and visit um, our friend Adriana. She has an amazing whiskey channel where she sorry, tries what different whiskeys. <laughs> she she tries so many um, different uh, uh, bourbons, mostly bourbons, but she tries them out in nature and she tries them on nature oh, trails and goes on hikes. Yeah, and actually, so, I was in Utah too. I was just in Moab and um, brought a bottle of the Ben Riek with me. So I was in Canyonlands drinking the Ben Riek Ten Smoky, and it was a delightful experience. 
<laughs> um, Brandon says, thank you. He's learning so much. He's also West. He's also California with me. Okay. Tommy T is in Texas. Um, Whiskey Mountain says it's gorgeous here in Utah. Yeah, I need to, I need to get out there for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So this next one, this is Cask 217, 1992 as well, 29 years old. Um, what else can you tell us about this one? Yep. So um, this is our 29 year old. This is the one that is 55.4%. So again, we're up duting from the 50 to the 55. So a little bit warmer. And this mm -hmm. is aged in the Oloroso cask. So we're back to that drier style of dessert wine. And this one I think is going to be a totally different experience. Now, this one's a smaller, it's only 383 bottles produced, which I'm sure it helps explain the, the jump in price there as well. Um, and the fact that it's the oldest one we're trying, almost 30 years old. Yep, um, absolutely. And it's it's important to keep in mind when we're talking about, you know, the rarity of these old whiskeys is that, you know, we lose whiskey every year. So for every year that it lives in a barrel, we're losing more whiskey. And that means that we have less to give to you. So it's always going to drive up in price just a little bit. But I think that once you get into these older years, it really can be worth it. Oh, wow. Totally different. Yeah, <laughs> definitely not not the same fruitiness that we were getting on the on the first one. I think it has like a I mean, the nose jumps out of the glass I and mean, this has an amazing nose. Like it's so prominent. I mean, it is the highest proof. Oh, I got to try this one without, I can't, I can't say, say too much without trying it. Mm. You said that's more your style, right? That, that dryer. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> it really is. And this almost has an oiliness to it. Like almost like, um, it's wrong to say gasoline, but that when you think about how like thick that is, it really does carry that with it and it carries the ethanol just beautifully. And it's I mean, I've heard people use nice. motor oil as an, as a positive note to describe whiskey. So that's not, that's not too far off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I definitely mean that positively. <laughs> yeah. Well, to me, I, I'm trying to describe it to me. It has like a minerality, like ironness to it. I I'm trying to, I, I'm not so, I'm not very familiar with this flavor profile. Um, it's, it's definitely different. So when I say minerality in the bourbon world, we think of like George Dickel, none of that. I'm not talking about the Tennessee kind of minerality, a completely different Flintstones vitamin. That's different. <laughs> this is, this is more of like, I, I don't know what to say. Like maybe like, I mean, it's weird, like gunpowder or like match, like match sticks, something, something really like big and bold on the palate there. Yeah, something I'm not used to at all. It has a really high acidity and minerality. I think mm -hmm. that is, I mean, perfect for the, for the thickness of this palette. It really needed something to kind of cut through that. Oh, and I just think that's lovely. This is exactly the kind of whiskey I like. Hmm. It has, it like almost like burnt sugar. Right. But it, like you said, like burnt, like it's, it's not nearly as sweet. So don't go into this expecting them to be this as sweet as the past, the other two. Not even close. And you know, one of Rachel's notes was treacle. And I don't know if you've, if any of you have had treacle, but it's, it, it's, it's like, black black strap molasses like it's like what's left of the sugar after you've processed it a hundred times and um and the sugar is so dense and dark and thick that it almost doesn't even resemble sugar anymore which doesn't make it sound as good as it is it mm. is delicious <laughs> to be clear um treacle is one of my favorite 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 desserts um and that is definitely such a great note yeah, I think it took me a few sips to really. I think again, I was caught off guard by by just it was so different. Um, I'm I'm pulling out more things that I appreciate in it now. I'm gonna pour myself just a little bit more of it because I think, um, yeah, I mean, I think to me, I, I gravitate towards sweeter whiskey, so I think I'm more leaning towards the first two. But this is super complex, super unlike any any other ones I've ever had before. Um, if you're looking for a new experience, I mean, this is definitely <laughs> definitely oh, worth going for. Wow. Yeah, this is this is really lovely. Do you know when you um, are making a cocktail and you accidentally get too much pith? Mm. So you get all that really lovely oil and then yeah. you also get just a touch of the pith underneath it as well. There's a little bit of that as well. I'm just having a hard time like putting this into words based on my experience. Cause it's so, I mean, maybe there, there's like some kind of like, there's a dark, rich oldness to it. Like almost like, I don't want to say like, 
but I'm, I'm having a hard time not to say bad words, but I mean good things. Like when I say musty, I don't mean it in a bad way, but like a, like an old closet or something like that. Like it has that antiqueness to it. Yes. Yeah. Leather, like your granddad's sitting room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, leather. Leather's a great one. I'm definitely, yeah, yeah. especially on the nose too. Mm -hmm. oh, I, I think I'm obsessed with this. <laughs> it tastes different every time I try it. Remember what I said? I was going to say every single one of these is my favorite. Oh, we're on the last one. You're, there we go. Yeah, didn't I? <laughs> but, but you, I mean, you did kind of hint towards the fact that you are drawn to more like Oloroso forward um, or just Oloroso. Uh, I keep saying Oloroso. It's, it's Oloroso, right? I've heard you Oloroso. pronounce it. Oloroso. Okay. I'm like, I'm, I don't, I, I'm bad at pronouncing things. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, wow. That's definitely different. I, I, I would encourage whoever gets this one to be familiar with that flavor profile. Um, I don't expect these all to be alike. Cause we, like we said, the, that wine impact affects these all so differently. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, um, and you know, it's the age, the loss, the barrel, where it was mm -hmm. in the warehouse. There's so many different aspects that'll change it. Yeah. Whiskey Mountain says she loves a leather note on whiskey. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Wow. So, okay. Now I'm going to, I'm going to go back through them and decide which one to me personally is my favorite. Now let me mention where that one's available. That one is the most limited of all of these, um, understandably so. There's only 383 bottles produced. This one is in Georgia, Maine, New York, and New Jersey. <laughs> I know I know. Stephen here is in New Jersey. I'm not sure if anyone else is from any of the other states. Let us know if you are. Um, but yeah, that one's available. That's Cask 217-1992. Wow, that's that's something different. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back through because I gotta. I want to revisit the first. I always like revisiting the first one because I always feel like it's not given a fair judgment being the first thing that we tried. Totally. So, I'm, going to to, so I'm going back to the 1994 Cask 5080. And this is the one that was, that was, I almost said finished. <laughs> this was also an Oloroso, but it's the punch in the larger casks. So do those typically, when we're talking about larger barrels, do they impact a less of the, of the, of the, wine that was in there before because i mean to me this one didn't have nearly as much it had the nuttiness for sure but it didn't have as much of that um i guess treacleness of it <laughs> yeah um you know it really depends on mm -hmm. the barrel of course um all of our barrels are shipped with a sherry still in them so um mm -hmm. they should have the relatively the same amount of impact from the sherry now, how often that barrel was used before is going to have a huge impact on that. So this first one could have had a more used barrel before our whiskey went into it mm -hmm. versus the last one, which may, maybe it was fresher. Um, so it could be either one of those things. It also could just be the extra two years that made a huge impact. Sometimes yeah. things happen very, very quickly in, our, in a warehouse. And going back to this one, after trying that one, I am picking up a lot more similarities than I did than I would have expected. Um, still, this one's still a lot sweeter. I think this one is still more of like the fruit forward, the more mm -hmm. orange, like you said, orange kind of zest kind of going on with it there. Chocolate, definitely more chocolate on this one, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I see our friend Jim is in uh, Maine and uh, Sugar Kitty is in New Jersey. So people from all over here. Um, Eric says he's drinking a four gate finish in Oloroso, um, as close as I can get. Hey, I love still, it. still, you can experience yeah. the cask finish there. Um, and then our friend uh, Scott says, cheers, Clifton, still at my draft party. Just stopping in to say, hey, hey, Scott, good to see you. <laughs> and going back to, so I'm going to go back to the 92 cask 6052 now, just to revisit it real quick. Mm. Oh, I think that's my favorite. <laughs> that's <laughs> right up my alley. That that um, PX ca cask is just, I mean, I already said that's like one of my favorite of all the dessert wines I've tried. Um, that and you said Salterns. I like I like Salterns a lot too. Um, I didn't realize I, I didn't know what to expect with that one. But man, I actually have bought several backup bottles of different ones just to try it because it's one that I've kind of fell in love with. Oh, absolutely! It's whenever I see a Salterns age whiskey, it's I don't even think about it. I just buy it. Uh, oh, I messed. Oh uh, no, I messed up. <laughs> it's MA is Massachusetts. I'm sorry. You're right, Boston MA. I was, I, was, I, was in, I was in panic mode. What, wait, what is Maine? Is it M? M-E, yeah. M -E, I guess I okay. could that, know that on the inside. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think for you know me what? that... I mixed up Idaho and Utah, so anything <laughs> goes, right? Right. <laughs> hmm. Oh, yeah, that... If you have a sweet tooth, I mean, that's that's really sweet and in and, and a very... I think it's it's complex, it's thick, it's viscous. Um, they're, they're all complex. I mean, don't get me wrong. These are all fantastic. Excellent. It just depends what your, what your palate 
to, to gravitate towards and what Absolutely. what kind of tickles your fancy there. <laughs> Absolutely. But, yeah. But you're right. This this really does have like and such a great juxtaposition next to that super dry. Oh yeah. Curtain. Wow. It's so different back and forth. Yeah. I'm really loving the way those two are playing against each other. Yeah, wow. that's lovely. <laughs> So you're still sticking with your gut going with the, the 92, the two, 217 being your favorite? Yep. Yeah, and lucky for me, I can actually get it in the state. <laughs> oh, there you go. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And actually, I just realized mine is also the one I can get in my state. Oh, we both were winners here. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, cool. We, we have just a couple more minutes. Just, do you have anything um, you guys are coming other than this release? Because this this is just what, in, as of March, this this was released? Yes. Um are you, is there anything else that we should and that's been announced that we should be getting excited for? I'm keeping an eye out for here in the states. Oh, absolutely. So we have the Glendronic 50 year that is coming to the states. Um, obviously, that's going to be very limited, but it is it is it's going to be just absolutely stunning and something to kind of keep your eye on. Um, we also have the Glendronic. Uh, this is the batch 19, which is going to be like offered in different sorts of states, um, mm -hmm. as you know. So just keep your eyes out. Sometimes things kind of get shuffled around as well. So just keep your eyes out for all of those. And then on our other one, we've been talking about Ben Reek a lot mm -hmm. um, tonight, more than I expected, for sure. Hey, I need to have you back on. I actually do not have much experience with that. So I'd love to have you on again to you know, talk, taste through those. Oh, yeah, I would love to do it. It's um, They're really fun whiskeys. Um, mm -hmm. And Glendronic, I always say, is, is our staple no changes, 1826. You know what you're getting in this bottle and you're going to love it. Um, ben Reek is more of that like, well, let's see how far we can push those scotch boundaries. Um, and we have some really cool things happening with them. We have a, our own malting floor at Ben Reek. Oh, so okay. we have two releases that are coming that are 100% floor malted. So the smoke season and the, the malting season. So keep an eye out for those as well. Um, so yeah, a lot of really cool things coming down the line. That's awesome. Well, where can people find you on the web? I know I tagged your wrong Instagram earlier. What What's the, the Instagram that uh, you want people to follow you at? <laughs> so that would be uh, Drams with Amber. So like a whiskey dram mm -hmm. with me, Amber. Yeah. And you guys check out my story on Instagram. I, I tagged her there. Please go give her a follow. We'd love to have you back on again, like you said, with that or any other upcoming releases from Glendronic. But um, Amber, this has been so much fun. Thank you again for coming okay. on. I, I really, really appreciate these whiskeys. And man, they, they're all, they're all like, hitters they're just incredible just diff so different from each other but that they're going to fit someone's palate just absolutely perfectly absolutely thank you so much and of course if you have any questions or any comments or anything like that feel free to reach out to me on my instagram page i uh, monitor that all of the time so would be happy to answer any of your questions yeah so those of you that had questions that she said she gave out to you just shoot her a message on instagram give her a reminder and she'll get back to you for sure yeah. um well so much fun thank you guys for watching like i said podcast coming out tomorrow we're reviewing ardbeg for a mutation a really weird one <laughs> um but yeah otherwise we have some other upcoming guests later this or next month um that i'm very excited for next week we're celebrating cinco de mayo we're doing some mezcal which i'm I, i'm really learning that i really really enjoy like even more so than tequila so um, that's coming up next week. And then, um, a few more guest um, surprises. Patreon already knows about all the upcoming guests. If you're interested in supporting the show for as little as $2 a month, patreon.com slash bourbon bites. But until next time, thank you again, Amber. And, um, I'll see you guys on the Patreon hangout, um, shortly after the show. So thank cheers. You. Have a great night, everyone.